On the issue of housing, His Excellency the President told us that very many houses that are now ready for Kenyans to purchase. And I ask myself, Madam Speaker, these houses are built on public land. These houses are built using our taxpayers' money. Why is the government selling these houses? Why can't you ballot and give those people that are, that are lucky to get these houses? Because we have already, it's like you have built a road on taxpayers' money. You cannot pull at all and start charging us. So it's the same thing. I think when it comes to issue of housing, the houses have been built. Let them be balloted and be given to Kenyans because you cannot sell me something that you have built with my money. If it is my money and I've built, you've built it, it becomes mine. Madam Speaker, on the values and um, principles of uh, good governance that uh, the President was to deal with, the first one on Article 10 a is the issue of democracy and the rule of law. Madam Speaker, the agencies of government have been weaponized always against the Kenyans. Madam Speaker, I want to give an example of the, is, uh, the, the former President, Uru Kenyatta. His own son was being harassed that he's in possession of firearms that are not supposed to be in his arms. Yet he had been given these firearms in a legal manner. We have weaponized the security systems. The youth came to attempt to give their opinion to the National Assembly. Under Article 37, which is our constitutional mandate, the young man that was shot outside Parliament is a member of, is a, is a person from my constituency. Madam Speaker, tens of young people, the future of this country has been killed using government bullets. How is that supposed to be a good state of the nation, Madam Speaker? So I want to say on the issue of the rule of law, this regime has failed. On the matter of participation of the people, you know, we ignored the voices of the people in 2023 finance bill. We ignored the voices of the people in the 2024 finance bill. Now we're ignoring the voice of the church. And Madam Speaker, as a result of that, there's always going to be consequences. Madam Speaker, it's important to note that also Article 10 2B of Member that's why the systems are not removing their names. So, Madam Speaker, I rise to add my voice, not praise, on this uh, speech by His Excellency, the President's address to Parliament. I hesitate to paint a rosy picture, especially because the public know otherwise. Madam Speaker, you know, numbers don't lie. When we talk about issues to do with the economy, we cannot be telling the public that are, we are doing so well when people cannot even, make basic, cannot even meet their basic needs. Madam Speaker, we are aware that under the current regime, taxes have been increased, so there is less spending power. Yet, even despite that, there is very little new development that is going on in the country. Madam Speaker, we have heard here that Kenya's exchange rate has dropped. Madam Speaker, when this regime came into power, the Kenyan shilling was 123 exchanging to the, to the dollar. Now it is 129. How is that a drop? When, it, when, when this regime came into power, they pushed it all the way up to 160. Now when they sort out the mess they created, now it becomes a drop. It is not a drop because we must compare this regime and the previous regime. Madam Speaker, we are being told that inflation is at a low of 2.7%. It is, it is a simple calculation that you need to understand. Inflation is a, cost, uh, is a price of goods and services. When people have no money to spend, then you cannot raise the prices because it, the prices are set by the laws of demand and supply. So if there's, no man, if there's no money to spend, there's no demand. Therefore, prices cannot go up. So inflation, obviously, has to, has, has to improve. So, Madam Speaker, on the, issue of, uh, on, the issue of, um, on the issue of the economy, I don't think we are doing very well. Madam Speaker, on education, the funding model has failed Kenyans. A lot of our children do not know whether they will do exams at the end of the year. And a lot of them haven't even gotten the money. You saw lecturers going on strike. We are happy that that was sorted out. But um, Madam Speaker, the CS for Education was in the House. And we talked about GSS classes. Transition to next year, 2025. Madam Speaker, the CS told us here that they are putting up 16,000 classes. The next day, I think on Saturday, he was talking about 18,000 classes. I'm beginning to ask myself, who do I believe? The CS that was in the House on Wednesday or the CS that was speaking in a public baraza on Saturday? Because those are two totally different figures. But Madam Speaker, the reality is this, that the number of schools is much, much more than the number of classes that are being put up. And of course, they are not even talking about the issue of the laboratories because junior secondary is a secondary school that requires laboratories and workshops 
for those science and technical subjects. Madam Speaker, on the issue of housing, His Excellency the President told us there are very many houses that are now ready for Kenyans to purchase. And I ask myself, Madam Speaker, these houses are built on public land. These houses are built using our taxpayers' money. Why is the government selling these houses? Why can't you ballot and give those people that are, that are lucky to get these houses? Because we have already, it's like you have built a road on taxpayers' money. You cannot pull at all and start charging us. So it's the same thing. I think when it comes to issue of housing, the houses have been built. Let them be balloted and be given to Kenyans because you cannot sell me something that you have built with my money. If it is my money and I've built, you've built it, it becomes mine. Madam Speaker, on the values and um, principles of uh, good governance that uh, the President was to deal with, the first one on Article 10 a is the issue of democracy and the rule of law. Madam Speaker, the agencies of government have been weaponized always against the Kenyans. Madam Speaker, I want to give an example of the, is, uh, the, the former president, Uru Kenyatta. His own son was being harassed that he's in possession of firearms that are not supposed to be in his arms. Yet he had been given these firearms in a legal manner. We have weaponized the security systems. The youth came to attempt to give their opinion to the National Assembly. Under Article 37, which is our constitutional mandate, the young man that was shot outside Parliament is a member of, is a, is a person from my constituency. Madam Speaker, tens of young people, the future of this country has been killed using government bullets. How is that supposed to be a good state of the nation, Madam Speaker? So I want to say on the issue of the rule of law, this regime has failed. On the matter of participation of the people, you know, we ignored the voices of the people in 2023 finance bill. We ignored the voices of the people in the 2024 finance bill. Now we're ignoring the voice of the church. And Madam Speaker, as a result of that, there's always going to be consequences. Madam Speaker, it's important to note that also Article 10 2B of How, how come other people are getting You see, what you should have done, Honorable Bui, is, may I get a minute? You make a request, you don't shout. Honorable Bui, the proper way, every member has been saying, may I have an extra minute to finish my sentence? Because you didn't ask for time, you just... I have had, I've mentioned that Kenya is not highly taxed because I think, I don't know, Tunisia, Morocco, they, they, they are taxed more, their tax to GDP is higher. How do you compare Kenya with some of those countries? The average salary in Tunisia is 176,000 a month. Average salary in South Africa is 187,000 a month. Average salary in Morocco is 263,000 shillings a month. The average salary of a Kenyan is 22,000 shillings. How do you compare light and day? Mr. Speaker, let us talk the truth. Mr. Speaker, you know, when I listened to this team when they were speaking during the Kenya Kansa team during the campaigns, they talked about raising the hustlers. In this finance bill, there is a proposal to tax welfare groups. Welfare groups are those chamas of our women when they put money together, Mr. Speaker, so that they can do table banking. A thousand shillings each, they put it together, then it is taken by one. Now this team wants to tax that money, take money that these women have worked hard for, the hustler women of this country, the mamamboga, the border border. Can you people be fair to Kenyan members? Let us stand up and oppose this bill, all of us. The voters are watching. The voters are watching. And I can tell you, those three people that you are respecting so much, when you lose the next election, they will not pick your call. And by that time, even these positions of cabinet, I don't know, CASs, we will have fought them, we will have removed them. They will no longer be there. Subject uh, matter is a person who is a family man with a wife and children and friends and relatives, and they are all listening. 
So I think maybe I will start by reading the Bible so that we can bring down the temperatures. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, Be kind, compassionate and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. Now verse 31, Mr. Speaker says, Put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting and slander along with every other evil. Mr. Speaker, as a member of Azimio La Umoja, one Kenya, I didn't believe in the leadership of Kenya Kwanzaa. I opposed it from the beginning. Mr. Speaker, I am vindicated now because I can tell the people of Kadiani that I said that this government is rudderless, is leaderless, is planless. And Mr. Speaker is also merciless because within a very short time, the center can no longer hold. Mr. Speaker, Senator, former Senator, now Governor James Orengo, famously said in Senate that governments eat their own people. Former leader of majority of the, of the National Assembly, Duale, was eaten by his government, today is a CS. Former Deputy Speaker of the Senate, Kidura Kindiki, was eaten by his government, now he's also a CS. Former Chair of Budget of this National Assembly was eaten by his government, today is the majority leader. I don't know, we are now eating Rigiji, where will he end up? Mr. Speaker, I have an issue of concern, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, Majority Leader. Honorable <laughs> <laughs> Speaker, is a Deputy Leader of Minority to assert that I was eaten by my own government, Honorable Speaker. Well, as he knows, I was never eaten by any government. I only stood firm against tyranny. I stood firm against the bullying that I experienced under that regime. The same bullying I have stood firm against a deputy president today who has been bullying members of parliament. And I have only put my chest forward to defend the rights of all these members, including the Honorable Robert Bui, who was, who was Honorable Speaker when the deputy president visited Kathiani. He said to the Honorable Bui that these cambers are too few. They can never make a president. Kalonzo can never be anything. How can you defend a person who has disdain for Kalonzo Musioka, a former vice president of this country? Mbui. Robert Mbui. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, I love the passion and, and the humor in the, in the majority leader. But Mr. Speaker, I'm also impressed by the energy that I've seen in this house. The vigor, the passion for money. I mean, it is a first bill or rather it's a first motion where this house has gone up to public participation in the constituencies. Mr. Speaker, I only wish that the energy that we are expending here to send a question to all Kenyans about one individual was being used to fight the issues that are failing us in our education, in our health sector. Uh, people here, the cost of living has gone too high. People have no jobs. Mr. Speaker, those are the things that this house should passionately deal with. But Mr. Speaker, for a whole day, and from, you know, I don't know even the last week or two weeks, to deal with that one matter. Mr. Speaker, I think that we are losing direction. And it is important, Mr. Speaker, that we deal with the things that are affecting our people. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you look at the education sector, I talked about it here the other day. We don't even have classes for grade 9 going into, into GSS. Mr. Speaker, the funding model for university has failed. Mr. Speaker, the insurance sector, NHIF, is having a problem, Mr. Speaker. How then do we spend taxpayers' money and time to come and deal with a matter of one single individual, Mr. Speaker? Now, we are told that this person, Mr. Speaker, is a tribalist. But, Mr. Speaker, those comments that he made, yesterday he made it very clear. And I was shocked. I was very shocked, Mr. Speaker, yesterday to realize that in fact Kenya Kwanza was actually a company that is limited by shares and that people negotiated shares for themselves. The mover of the motion is a member of MCCP. MCCP negotiated shares for Lower Eastern. Mr. Speaker, because we had two cabinet secretaries in this government, now, Mr. Speaker, we only have one. And I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, actions speak louder than words. The Deputy President may have said that he is a shareholder and there are issues about his community, but if you look at the appointments that are being made in Kenya, 
then you will realize that the person of the president himself is the one who is the biggest tribalist, Mr. Speaker, because he's appointing people from his own community for every provision. Mr. Speaker, if we have to find a situation where our school has failed, you do not fire the deputy principal. You get rid of the principal. Our problem is not the deputy. It is the head yes, himself. Farah. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Farah. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was standing... Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I'm also impressed by the energy that I've seen in this house, the vigor, the passion for money. I mean, it is the first bill, or rather it's the first motion, where this house has gone up to public participation in the constituencies. Mr. Speaker, I only wish that the energy that we are expending here to send a question to all Kenyans about one individual was being used to fight the issues that are failing us in our education, in our health sector, uh, people here the cost of living has gone too high, people have no jobs. Mr. Speaker, those are the things that this House should passionately deal with. But Mr. Speaker, for a whole day, and from, you know, I don't know even the last week or two weeks, to deal with that one matter, Mr. Speaker, I think that we are losing direction. And it is important, Mr. Speaker, that we deal with the things that are affecting our people. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you look at the education sector, I talked about it here the other day, we don't even have classes for grade 9 going into, into GSS. Mr. Speaker, the funding model for university has failed. Mr. Speaker, the insurance sector, NHIF, is having a problem, Mr. Speaker. How then do we spend taxpayers' money and time to come and deal with a matter of one single individual, Mr. Speaker? Now, we are told that this person, Mr. Speaker, is a tribalist. But, Mr. Speaker, those comments that he made, yesterday he made it very clear. And I was shocked, I was very shocked, Mr. Speaker, yesterday, to realize that in fact Kenya Kwanza was actually a company that is limited by shares and that people negotiated shares for themselves. The mover of the motion is a member of MCCP. MCCP negotiated shares for Lower Eastern. Mr. Speaker, because we have two cabinet secretaries in this government, now, Mr. Speaker, we only have one. And I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, actions speak louder than words. The Deputy President may have said that he is a shareholder and there are issues about his community. But if you look at the appointments that are being made in Kenya, then you will realize that the person of the president himself is the one who is the biggest tribalist, Mr. Speaker, because he's appointing people from his own community for every provision. Mr. Speaker, if we have to find a situation where our school has failed, you do not fire the deputy principal. You get rid of the principal. Our problem is not the deputy. It is the head yes, Thank you, Mr. Speaker, what solutions is Kenya Kwanza offering? The answer is none. What they have done is they are just pushing, blaming other people. And Madam Speaker, I'm very happy because the issue of uh, Uhuru and Raila has been mentioned. And they, have been, they've keep, they keep telling us that they found empty copper, coffers, I think money was stolen. Let me say, Madam Speaker, that this regime must respect the rule of law. If anyone steals money, they control the police. They control ESCC, they control DCI, they control DPP. Let them arrest the people that they keep talking about. Yes. Otherwise, we cannot keep you know, uh, shifting blame on people that are not responsible for the problems that this country is facing.